The boxers have been given their instructions. The seconds are out. The crowd is ready for another edition of Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing with your presenter, the boxing historian, Greg Rasheed. Well, I want to say swatty cop to everyone out there. This is Greg Rashid, your presenter for another edition of the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. And if you're new to the program, swatty cop means hello in Thai, and I am in Bangkok, Thailand. Loving the weather, just loving being over here, and loving the fact that you've spent some time today to join the program. And I just want to thank so many folks who have become members or subscribers, but still, still, I have almost 2,000 subscribers and only probably about 80% of the folks that listen to this program actually are subscribers, so please, please subscribe if you're listening to the program, and I know a number of you, I'm going to call names soon, but there are a number of you I know out there who listen to this program on Facebook and other places who I know very well who are not subscribers. So please, please subscribe to the program. Really appreciate it. And if you can, become a Patreon like my first Patreon, our Red Sox fan. And join by being a Patreon. Go to patreon.com ringside fantasy fights and news. Patreon.com slash Ringside Fantasy Fights in News. And become a Patreon member. I mean, it could be a dollar a month, whatever you can do, so we can get better equipment and give you the best possible programs on here. And so many of you like the programs, but if you're new to the program, what we do here is we do fantasy fights. We use different forms and modalities to create these fantasy what-if fights. And I know if you're a boxing fan, and you're listening in because you are a boxing fan. You always wonder, what would happen if Muhammad Ali fought Tyson Fury? Or what would happen if uh, Mike Tyson fought Joe Lewis? So we do that on here. And these aren't etched in stone, the results. It's just fun. You know, just imagine it. Because I always say, we can do these fights a thousand times, have two guys fight. We could get 50-50 results. But it's just all fun. So we just use our imagination. And today... Our fighters are going to be going to use some current fighters. Uh, Anthony Joshua versus Jilly Jang, the Big Bang out of China. And that should be a classic. You know, these guys, I don't know how long it's going to last, but it might not last that long. And we're using Title Bout 2 PC game created by Jim Trunza. And send much love to him and his family. They're trying to recover from some operations and all, so just send them much love. Jim is an amazing guy. In fact, I think, and I might create a petition about this, given what Jim has done in over, my goodness, I would say almost 50-some years now, as far as making new boxing fans and just elevating current boxing fans of his games, originally titled about the card game, it's still card game is still out there, but now he also has the PC game. What he's done, I would actually put him in the International Boxing Hall of Fame as a contributor. But what do you think? You know, I'm really thinking about doing that, making that petition. But anyway, you know, we talk about these fights we, we're using today, tight about two PC game. And we also do news on here and boxing history. But we're going to go straight to the fight right now. We're not even going to wait. And we're going to go Joshua versus Zhang. And we're going to have coming back to commentate today, although he can only do it in Britain because he's still having problems with his uh, visa. The one and only knockout Nigel. And I, there's a petition, speaking about my petition, there's another petition out there to get knockout Nigel to run for president, but he can't because he's a British citizen. But anyway, let's get to the program right now. 
on the show, the Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. So just sit back, get your favorite beverage, and enjoy Knockout Nigel in the show. Cheers. This is your humble commentator, Knockout Nigel. Happy to be back with you to bring you another exciting bout. Coming to you from Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London, where hometown favorite Anthony Joshua will match blows with China's Big Bang, Zhilei Zhang. Even though this is a scheduled 12-rounder, I have a sense that these monstrous sluggers will prevent this one from going the distance. Our man in charge of the action in the ring will be Eddie Garcia. The fighters have been given their instructions. The fight will be judged on the 10-point must system. And naturally, I must have a sip of bubbly as round one begins. Joshua bounces out of his corner and scores a three-point combination, three-point left hook to the head and three-point left hook to the body. Zhang clinches. He is shaking his head to the crowd, letting everyone know he was unfazed by that barrage. Usually when a fighter does that, he is hurt. Zhang lands a two-point right hook and a partially blocked left hook for one point. Zhang is successful in cutting off the ring and pinning Joshua in the right neutral corner. Joshua fights his way out of the corner and delivers a five-point combination that knocks Zhang into the far ropes. Zhang appears hurt. Joshua misses with a left uppercut, then scores a two-point combination. Joshua misses with a left cross. Zhang counters with a three-point right cross. The fighters are in ring center. My word, Joshua lands a five-point left cross that buckles Zhang's knees. His legs are moving in different directions than his torso. There appears to be a mouse over Zhang's right eye from that shot. The bell has sounded to end round one. Ajay made that a statement round. He wanted to show Zhang that he plans to beat him like he did when they were amateurs. Joshua had 21 points to 6 points for Zhang. I will take a snippet of bubbly as round two begins. The fighters are at center ring, fainting and moving. Zhang scores a hard right hand, lead five points that knocks Joshua into the ropes. Zhang moves in to land a three-point left cross and two-point right jab. That last punch had a little elbow with it. Referee Garcia warns Zhang about using his elbow. The fighters are in ring center. Zhang lands a four-point right hook. Joshua's head snaps back from the blow. Zhang misses with a follow-up right jab. Joshua clinches, then pushes Zhang back. Joshua lands a two-point combination and four-point left cross. Zhang is an easy target for AJ because he has little in the way of defense. Joshua lands a four-point left cross and four-point right uppercut that sends Zhang back into the ropes. Joshua lands a two-point left jab. Zhang continues to offer not much in the way of defense. Let's hope for the hometown crowd's sake that AJ doesn't get too confident and walk into a Zhang right. The bell has ended round two. Zhang started well early, but I had Joshua winning the round. Joshua had 16 points to 14 for Zhang. Round three begins, which means my third sip of bubbly. Zhang misses with a right hook. Joshua counters with a four-point left hook that twists Zhang's face around. Zhang misses with a left cross. Joshua misses with a counter combination. Zhang plods forward to land a three-point right uppercut. Joshua misses with his own right uppercut. Joshua misses with a left uppercut. Zhang is showing some good head movement. Zhang misses with a counter right jab and left cross. Joshua misses a left uppercut. Zhang lands a four-point right hook to the Joshua's ribs. The stadium echoed with Joshua's groan from that punch. I am surprised that he didn't take a knee from that blow. The bell ends round three. Joshua walks back to his corner, rubbing his side. He may have a broken rib. Zhang came on in the third. He didn't throw much, but the ones that connected were damaging. Zhang had seven points to four for Joshua. A good rib soother 
is a taste of bubbly. But I dare not offer Joshua any, or I may get suspended again. And anyway, this is my bubbly and my bubbly alone. No one touches my bubbly, which will have a wee bit of now as round four begins. Joshua lands a two-left point jab. Joshua is moving about the ring, trying to establish position. Joshua lands a two-point left cross. Jang lands a counter-right cross for five points that staggers Joshua. Jang pushes Joshua into the neutral corner. He lands a two-point right hook, two-point right jab, two-point combo, three-point left hook, and a three-point right cross. Joshua is trying to cover up, but the punches are getting through. I see a white towel from one of Joshua's corner men. Is he about to end this match? Zhang scores a four-point right lead. Joshua is being pummeled with Zhang's blows. Referee Garcia is looking intently at Joshua, but has not stepped in. Zhang lands a three-point right cross, two-point left uppercut, three-point right hook, and three-point right cross. Will someone please stop this bout? AJ is a helpless pugilist. The bell ends round four before Zhang can continue the onslaught. Even Stevie Wonder could see Zhang won that round. Zhang had 32 points to only four for Joshua. The tide of this fight has certainly changed since the earlier rounds. Only Joshua's will and fortitude kept him from going down in round four. I am trying my best to be impartial, but I hate seeing my fellow countrymen be beaten that way, especially one as popular as AJ. I will now drink a double dose of bubbly, hoping that will help Joshua. Round five begins with Joshua moving around the ring, away from Jang's powerful right. Jang cuts the ring off and lands a five-point combination that sends Joshua into the ropes. He is seriously stunned by those blows. I don't think AJ recovered from the last round. Zhang lands a three-point combination. Joshua lands a two-point combination of his own. Zhang lands a five-point right hook that turns Joshua's legs to rubber. Zhang misses with a combination. They are at ring center, toe to toe. Joshua lands a three-point right uppercut. Jang returns a five-point straight right that knocks Joshua into the far ropes. Jang lands a five-point combination. Joshua has his hands at this sides. Referee Garcia steps between the boxes and stops the fight. He should have stopped it in the fourth. Did he want Joshua to suffer serious damage in there? At the time of 1.50 of round five, the winner by technical knockout is the Big Bang, Jilei Zhang. Zhang is walking around the ring draped in the flag of China. He is motioning toward me. He is telling me that Chinese bubbly is the best. He is calling my bubbly mere soda pop that babies drink. Hey Zhang, don't you dare talk about my precious bubbly. I am now going to return you to our Bangkok studio as I have some choice words for this bloke. This is Knockout Nigel. Cheers. Hey, you big bang. I heard your bubbly is nothing but well water mixed with vinegar. Easy, e easy now, oh, Knockout. Easy. Come on now. We're trying to keep you from going back to the psych ward again. But, uh, and we want you to get your visa so you can come back, come to the U.S., come to Thailand, come everywhere. But right now you're just in... The UK, because you can't come because some of the things you've done recently. So calm down. Zhang is too big for you. You don't want to get in the ring. Don't mess with him. Just calm down. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that fight. And I think that I could see that actually happening. Um, Jilly Zhang versus uh, Anthony Joshua. I could see Zhang giving Joshua a hard time. And Zhang, you know, he's on really speed dial when it comes to fighting right now because he's 40 two I believe so he doesn't have that long so he's trying to get all the fights that he can get in but I hope you enjoyed that fight and as a bonus we have another fight right now and this one is going to be uh the commentator is going to be uh the one and only um this is uh Nigel's cousin Percy Punchline Pemberton and this is another Joshua fight this is Anthony Joshua versus 
Deontay Wilder. So let's check that out on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. The gloves are on and the lights are bright. Percy Punchline Pemberton here. Let's bring on the fight. I want to welcome you to the Cleveland Arena for our 10-round heavyweight bout between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, two fighters with dynamite in their fists but crystal for jaws. The referee is Zach Clayton. The round one bell has begun. Joshua and Wilder meet each other at ring center. Wilder lands a one-point left uppercut. Joshua returns with a one-point straight right and a one-point left jab. Wilder connects with a two-point combination. Joshua counters with one-point left jab. There is not any defense in this round with these two. They are as defensive-minded as the 2023 Carolina Panthers. Wilder connects with a one-point left jab. Joshua lands a one-point left jab. Wilder throws a connecting one-point combination. Joshua wins up a corkscrew straight right for three points that stuns Wilder. Wilder attempts to clinch but stumbles and falls into the ropes above press row. He doesn't know where he is. Ah there is the bell to end round one. Wilder walks back to his corner like he is on roller skates in a hurricane. He will need to take off those roller skates and put on some track shoes to avoid Joshua's right. Round two begins with Joshua connecting with a left jab for one point. Wilder returns with his own one-point left jab. Off his back foot, Wilder lands a six-point right lead that drops Joshua to the canvas. That right had more power than a missile hitting a target. Can Joshua get up from that? Zach Clayton has begun the count. Somehow Joshua is up at three. He tells Clayton he can continue. Any other fighter would have been sleeping on the floor after that punch from Wilder. Wilder lands a leaping right for four points that staggers Joshua into the ropes. Wilder lands another right lead for one point. With his back against the ropes, Joshua lands a two-point double left jab. Wilder counters with a windmill three-point left hook that snaps Joshua's head back. Wilder moves to Joshua's left and lands a four-point right cross that knocks Joshua down. Clayton begins the count. He may stop this fight. Joshua is up at six. Clayton asks him again if he can continue. Joshua is non-committal, causing the referee to stop the fight at 2.22 of the second round. The winner by TKO is the bronze bomber, Dante Wilder. Wilder's right hand is a game-changer. It is as explosive as receiving an audit from the IRS. I am going to now return you to the Bangkok studio. The gloves are off and so am I, Percy Punchline Pemberton here, signing off until next time. Thank you, Percy. And uh, I guess uh, Joshua today is 0 for 2. You know, um, I could see, you know, I could actually see this fight also happening as far as um, Deontay. And I'm going to say that. Maybe three years ago, he could knock out Wilder. You know, I mean, knock out Joshua. But I don't, I don't know now. I don't know now. Um, Deontay Wilder looks like a shot fighter to me. And they want him to fight. I think they want him to fight uh, Dirk Tizora or Dylan White, one or the other. But they want him to fight one of these guys. And I think he's just a shot fighter. But we'll see. But I hope you enjoyed those two fights. Again, they were simulated by title bout. Boxing 2 PC. You can get it online. Great game. The card game and also a computer game. We're using the computer game today. But we use a lot of simulations on here. Also use Glory Days Boxing, created by League Anthony Crooks. We also use uh, Legends of Boxing 2 PC, created by Gary Brown, who will be on the program in the coming months, probably late September. Hope you enjoyed those fights, but as I always tell folks, this is a variety show. This is the only boxing variety show in the universe. And right now we're going to get into some boxing news, and we have Edie. She's going to tell you a little bit about, first we're going to start with uh, her information, the latest things about uh, Terrence Crawford. So let's hear what she has to say about Terrence Terrence Crawford on the Show the Road Virtual Boxing Podcast. There is only one fighter Terence Crawford wants to face next according to Taki Aloshik. 
Alashik brought a riot season event to Los Angeles earlier this month, which saw Crawford beat Israel Madrimov to become WBA light middleweight champion. With Crawford now a four-weight world champion, he is looking to continue pushing the boundaries and is eager to challenge the biggest stars in higher weight divisions. One of those is unified super middleweight saw Canelo Alvarez who returns to action on September 14th against Edgar Balonga live on the zone. A meeting with Alvarez appears to be the only opponent Crawford is interested in facing Alashki revealed during an interview with Charlie Parsons on X despite making an offer for the Nebraska a clash with Virgil Ortiz Jr. I don't think Crawford will fight anyone but Canelo. This is my opinion, Alashik said. But you know, I also read too that Alashik may be setting up a Terrence Crawford and Gennady Golovkin fight, which I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand that. Um, Gani, you know, Gani, uh, Triple G is technically retired, but if he comes back, that's going. I don't care what age he is. That's going to be a tough fight for Terrence. And Terrence is one of the all-time greats, in my opinion, right now. But he, you know, Triple G is a true middleweight, and he is tough. And you can you can argue that the first two fights against uh, when he fought Canelo, that he may have, he probably won those fights. The third one, I think Canelo definitely won that fight. But those first two fights, you can actually give it to uh, Triple G. So I don't know. You know, I actually think it's just like rumors. It's not going to really happen, but we shall find out. But uh, Turkey Alashik has some other information that Edie will talk about right now on the Show the Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. His Excellency Turkey Alashik has made it clear that he wants to make Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua next, even if the Gypsy King loses the rematch to Alexander Yusik. An all-British boxing showdown between the two heavyweight giants would go down as one of the biggest fights in the history of the sport, with fans craving to see the pair go head-to-head. Yusik became the first undisputed heavyweight champion of the world since Lennox Lewis in 1999 when he defeated Fury back in May. The 37-year-old secured a tight split decision win on the judges' scorecards after an epic battle at Kingdom Arena. The official score totals read 115 to 112 Yusik, 114 to 113 Fury, and 114 to 113 Yusik. Alashi confirmed that the rematch between Yusik and Fury is being planned for the 21st of December in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. If the Gypsy King can exact his revenge and Joshua gets through Daniel Dubois on the 21st of September, his excellency vows to make Fury vs. Joshua next. Speaking to Charlie Parsons via an X space, his excellency said, Joshua, if he wins, he will wait for the result of Tyson and Yusik, this is the big fight and everyone will wait for it. If Tyson wins then that means we must see Joshua vs. Tyson. One of the biggest fights in boxing, all the people want to see it. However, what wasn't as clear was what would happen if one of them failed to win their respective fights. Clarifying Saudi Arabia's stance on the fight if that scenario were to play out, I will tell you the clear answers, His Excellency added. Even if they lost before it doesn't mean everyone doesn't want to see it. First of all if Yusik wins then he deserves to choose a big fight and this will be his right, right. If he chooses Joshua and Joshua accepts then we want to do this fight but still at the same time we want to see Tyson vs Joshua. Let's see what Tyson will do on this night and whether he will give us on December 21st a great fight then for sure we want to see him against Joshua. This would be huge for the fans and for boxing. If Tyson wins then that means we must see Joshua vs Tyson. One of the biggest fights in boxing, all the people want to see it. However, what wasn't as clear was what would happen if one of them failed to win their respective fights. Clarifying Saudi Arabia's stance on the fight if that scenario were to play out, I will tell you the clear answers, His Excellency added. Even if they lost before it doesn't mean everyone doesn't want to see it. First of all if Yusik wins then he deserves to choose a big fight and this will be his right, right. 
If he chooses Joshua and Joshua accepts then we want to do this fight but still at the same time we want to see Tyson vs Joshua. Let's see what Tyson will do on this night and whether he will give us on December 21st a great fight then for sure we want to see him against Joshua. This would be huge for the fans and for boxing. Yeah, I got a feeling no matter what happens, as Edie just said, and thank you again, Edie, I think they're going to have the Joshua versus uh, Fury fight no matter what. If it takes place next year or even a year after in 2026, I think it's going to happen, you know, because that's probably the biggest fight that could happen in Britain right now. And I think this has been one they've been clamoring about for, I'd say, eight years. You know, so we'll see what happens with that. But uh, Edie has some information now about uh, Muhammad Ali's uh, two grandsons. And so let's hear what she has to say about them on the Show the Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Muhammad Ali's fighting grandson Bayajo Ali Wash kept up the family legacy as he landed the first knockout of his professional career last night. The mild-mannered former football player landed a slew of early finishes in his amateur career, which also took place under the PFL banner over the last two years. But he was taking the distance in his pro debut this February, ending a six-fight streak of knockouts. He made his return to action last night in Hollywood, Florida to kick off the ESPN main card on a night of playoff action that otherwise featured light heavyweights and lightweights. And despite his opponent weighing in a massive five pounds heavier than him, the bout went ahead, with Oli Wash winning within a minute. On Friday night in Hollywood, Florida, the fan favorite Bayajo Oli Wash made his sophomore outing as a professional in another prime TV spot. Generally, ESPN would just show the four playoff fights during a PFL card, but they made an exception in order to squeeze in a quick fight from the grandson of a legend. Luckily for the broadcaster, they didn't have much to show as Oli Wash and his opponent Brian Stapleton both made their walks quickly, before squaring off for just 55 seconds. Stapleton, making his professional debut, had stepped in on a week's notice when original opponent Corey Taylor was injured. After missing weight and forcing the bout into a catchweight, Stapleton looked considerably slower than Oli Wash and was dropped early. And within seconds, he was put down again with a straight right that ended the night early and continued the winning streak for his opponent. The victory was yet another indicator of the levels between Ali Wash and his crop of opponents since signing with the PFL in 2022. He stopped all of his amateur opponents within two rounds, but was dragged the distance in his debut at the pro level by Emmanuel Palacio. However, he is refusing to lose the run of himself and given his late start in combat sport following a glowing football career in his youth, he says it could be years before his fighting name opponents in the smart cage. I'm a baby, he insisted during a post-fight media scrum. It's going to take a long time, like maybe a couple of years for me to even get to that point where I'm fighting guys who have been in the sport longer than I have. Guys that are in the tournament or have a really good record. This sport is a marathon, not a sprint and I'm American, I'm not Russian. Flavor Flav told me to say that, it's a play on words. I'm not looking to rush nothing I want to get better and learn on the job. The wind delighted the Florida crowd, who only got two other stoppages all night. In amongst the chaos were boxer Nico Oli Wash, Biashio's brother, and their music icon godfather Flavor Flav, who attends all of their fights. The younger Ali Wash sibling opts not to have his brother in the corner for his fights given the differences between MMA striking and boxing. But he still receives positive advice before his fights, with Nico holding considerably more combat experience. Nico is a boxer and he knows that I like to stand and throw hands, Ali Wash told Bloody Elbow after the fight. There are certain things that he tells me like, look for this, don't throw 100% into your shots and my striking coach was his boxing coach for years. We have that kind of small circle and the advice Nico usually gives me in the stand-up. Boxing and MMA striking is completely different, there's a range difference and a stance difference, you can't really have that bladed stance too much in MMA because you get low kicked. 
You've got to be a bit more square and find that balance in between and my striking coach is really good at striking for MMA. So I've got my team and that's all I need. All right, Edie, thank you for that. It's really interesting that uh, Ali has uh, two grandsons out there in combat sports, and they are, they are the uh, sons of Rashida Ali. You know, Ali had a number of daughters, uh, and he just, um, you know, I mean, his legacy just continues. It's just going on and on, you know, and it's just um, the greatest. I mean, I mean, he said it, but the fact is, when you look at fights, uh, he was the greatest uh, fighter, in my humble opinion, ever. And that's because not only in the ring, but outside of the ring, what he went through as far as with uh, the whole draft system in the 60s, uh, being banned from boxing, having his title taken away, and coming back the way he did, just amazing. Just totally amazing. And speaking of uh, boxing history, Edie's going to tell us a little bit about some boxing history that has occurred this week and Today, I say this week, um, this is uh, today, August 18th. So she'll be talking about what happened from August, I believe, 14th till August the 18th, and maybe beyond. So let's hear what she has to say on the show to roll virtual boxing podcast. August 13, 2011, Kimbo Slice made his boxing debut with a 17-second knockout of James Wade. August 14, 2010, Jean Pascal defeated Chad Dawson by a technical decision due to an accidental headbutt. August 15, 2009, Roy Jones Jr. defeated Jeff Lacey in round 10. August 16, 1743, Jack Broughton, champion of England, published the earliest boxing code titled Rules of the Ring. August 17, 1938, Henry Armstrong won his third concurrent boxing championship. August 18, 1967, Carlos Ortiz retained his world lightweight title against Ismael Laguna. August 19, 1995, Mike Tyson defeated Peter McNeely in his first comeback fight. Man, McNeely, he, I mean, he probably, if he's not a millionaire, he, he should be one. I mean, he milked that fight. I mean, he went out in, what, less than 30 seconds? But he did commercials. He did everything. And I hope he saved his money. I hope he saved his money there. And I'm surprised, um, I'm surprised that uh, the Paul brothers, both Jake and uh, Logan, haven't called him out. But, you know, we'll see. But we'll be talking later on in the uh, upcoming shows about the, if it happens, if it happens, the Jake Paul-Mike Tyson battle that's going to be in November. And they're going to have a press conference today. And so I'm going to be checking that out later on. But I hope you enjoyed the history there, because I always got to know where, where the history came from to appreciate boxers today. And, just, and there's so many fights that are on YouTube. If you don't know some of the names that you hear on this program, just Google and just look for them on YouTube. Fascinating fights. Fascinating fights to see. And I know you know that as a boxing fan. But we're going to get to, we're going to switch gears now, because this is a variety show, too. And we're going to do some music right now. Starting with, you know, you know an instrument that's not considered a jazz instrument per se, but this young lady, I mean, she could play the harp. And she was a, a jazz harpist. Who I'm talking about is a Dorothy Ashby. And this is um, the song Pocky. And this, you know, just from her uh, album from 1958, it was called uh, Hip Hop, Hip Harp. Ray before hip hop. So let's hear that on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. <laughs>
And that was another instrument you would rarely, you wouldn't even think of as far as being a, a jazz instrument, but that was a uh, Rufus Hartley, and it, that was bagpipe blues. And Rufus, you know, he was in the 70s, uh, late 60s, early 70s, and he, you know, he could play. He could play. You know, Rufus Hartley, bagpipe blues. And before that, we did um, Pocky by Dorothy Ashby on the harp. Two instruments you rarely hear, you know, say, those are jazz instruments. In fact, the next one I'll do, you, you hear this uh, instrument from time to time in jazz, but this is um, Stuff Smith, back from the late 30s, on the violin, and Use a Viper. So let's hear that on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. <laughs> Come on down, Gate. Let's smoke a little tea this evening, huh? Three pot reaper, five feet long. The mighty men, but not too strong. You get high, but not for long. Why, man? Cause you's the viper. Yeah. Now I'm the king of everything. You gotta get high to have that swing. Light as tea, let it be. Yeah, Cause you's the viper. Now your throat gets dry and you know you're high. Everything is dandy. Truck into the candy store. But your con con peppermint candy. Then you know your body's thin. You don't give a darn if you don't pay rent. Sky's high, you high. Why? Cause you's the viper.
I'm sorry, I was uh, singing along with that, but that was the uh, Young Masters from the late 60s and In Love in Vain on the Show the Road Virtual Boxing Podcast. And you never know where I'll go with the music on this program. You know, sometimes I think I'm punch drunk where I go with this music. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that. And before that, we did uh, the actress, the British actress, Diana Doors, Roller Coaster Blues. And if you didn't catch those double entendres in that song, I don't know. You, you need to um, get that wax out of your ears. But <clears throat> Diana Doors, you know, she was known for her um, orgies. And that's all I'll say. Look her up and learn more. And she was kind of like the, um, in the 50s and 60s, like, you know, she was like the British answer to Marilyn Monroe. And before that, we did uh, John Hardy by Dirk. Roberts on the banjo, one of my favorites. And then we started to set off with uh, Stuff Smith on violin and Use a Viper. And I hope you enjoyed the program today, the fights we had on earlier, the news, the history, and also the music at the end because we are a boxing variety show. And if you want to become a promoter of a fight, if there's any fights uh, you want us to uh, put on the program, just let me know. Let me know. And again, become a Patreon just like Al Red Sox fan did as other folks have done. And by the way, check out Al Red Sox fan's YouTube channel. Great channel. He does some great events on it. He does boxing, football, baseball, you name it. Just a great guy. But as well as all you folks that are listening, you're great folks. I want to thank you. Thank you for the comments and everything. But you can become a promoter of the program. Go to my Patreon site, look for Ringside Fantasy Fights and News, and become a Patreon. But we're going to get ready to get out of here right now. And I just want to say, go in love and go in peace. Help someone along the way. And remember, when you get up in the morning, get up, get out of that bed, look in that mirror, and hug yourself and say, I love myself. And if you're sight impaired, get up, hug yourself, and say, I love myself because if you don't love yourself, you can't do anything. You can't help anyone, but you can't help yourself because you don't love yourself. So do what you can. You know, just really appreciate your yourself. And by doing that, you can appreciate what's going on around you. And I know there's a lot of problems in the world, you know, and the things that you know, you think it's beyond our capacity to even make some changes, but you can do what you can in your community. Just small changes, where it's helping a senior citizen, helping a young person, you know, seeing an animal that might be injured or something. Do what you can to make this a better place. Cleaning up the environment in your neighborhood. Do what you can, because we're all in this together. This is our sphere. Really enjoy it and do what you can to make it a better place. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Act today, now, and you do it to make that change. But again, this is Greg Rashid. Hope you enjoyed the program. We just love giving you these fantasy fights, and we'll see you next time on the Show the Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Do what you can to make this a better, better place, because if you don't do it, and you wait for somebody else to do it, it'll never be done. So go in love and go in peace, and we'll see you next time on the Show to Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thanks, and have a great day.